So there's a pretty good chance that unless you've had somebody employed for SEO specifically, and that SEO is up to date and, and practicing schema and utilizing schema, there's a pretty good chance this is not on your website. Welcome back to Local SEO Tactics, where we bring you tips and tricks to get found online. I'm your host, Jesse Dolan, here with Mr. Bob Brennan, Sue Ginsberg. Hello. Talking about SEO here. Sue, this is the first episode where you don't have a virtual background. We're kind of testing out our new platform and format here. So even though you don't have a virtual background, uh, tell us what's happening today. Well, I will go with being virtually in Egypt because I have this beautiful hieroglyphics um, framed art piece behind me. So for all you listeners or everybody who's watching this, picture me virtually coming to you from Egypt. Perfect. Okay, question, listeners and client question that we will be talking about today. What is a website schema and why it is it, why is it important to have for a website. This is part of the service that we provide to our SEO clients. And this question comes up a lot. It's not a question that, sorry, it's not a term that those of us not in SEO are familiar with it and use. So I think this is a great question that will help a lot of our listeners today. Quote of the day today is, always deliver more than expected And that quote is from Larry Page, co-founder of Google. I liked this quote as it applies to the topic today because many, if not most business owners don't even know that this exists or know that it's important. So we are in essence delivering more than they expected because it's something they didn't even know about. So story that I'll share about this. When I first moved to Minneapolis, Every time I drove on a frontage road, I wondered to myself, how long is this road that is everywhere and when is it ever going to end? Then I moved to Austin and it was the same thing. I'm hearing terminology that I didn't know all the time. Have you seen the bats? People would ask and I'd think, what are they talking about? Or are you going to 40 acres? Which I then learned was UT Austin, but it's like 40 acres, 40 acres where? I share this because we all hear language that is known to the locals or in business to those in the industry. And until we hear it a dozen or so times, we don't even think that we may need to know what the heck it means. It's the same in business. I could have shared examples of when I first started with 3Ms, all the so many acronyms that they use, I'd be sitting there going, but what are these things? And can somebody please talk in plain English to me? Then you learn after you hear them for a while and you start to ask. So that's what today's question remind me of, using a term that's known in the industry and not at all commonly known, talking about website schema. Do business owners know what website schema is and why it's important to have for a website? I highly doubt it because why would they know that? Why would they need to know that? Unless you've built a website and really got into what it takes to make a website a good website, especially for SEO, you could live your whole life without ever even hearing that term. So for those who build websites and work on websites for SEO all day, every day, of course, we understand and know this term and why it's so important. Today's question is to let business owners who work on their business all day long, every day, and not their website all day long, every day, know and understand the importance of schema. So with that, let's hear what the experts have to say. To you, Jesse and Bob. Yeah, I think, Bob, I'll start off. Um, schema, Sue, to your point, is extremely uh, technical, right? It's it's right now, at least today, um, end of 2020, one of the more technical parts uh, of your website and of SEO. We've had uh, an expert on Terry Samuels uh, a few times interviewed on this show here. And first thing, I want to refer everybody um, to episodes 76 and 77 of our podcast. Go to localseotactics.com uh, and, uh, and and search for those. There was one interview that we did with Terry, 
And it turned into a two-part interview because we got uh, long on time. So we released it in two different segments, but the entire episode is really about uh, this question, what is schema? It's kind of a basic introduction to schema. Uh, And so we're not going to do a deep dive into those exact same answers in in those topics because Terry lays it out really good. Uh, But I think we need to highlight it and then kind of demystify it for everybody a little bit here. So um, the point you made about business owners not knowing about this, um, I think is pretty valid. And one of the reasons for that is, is you can't see uh, the schema on your website, right? It's not like a new image or a headline or animation or something else on page for you to see. Schema is all in the background. If anybody wants to kind of see some of this, you know what it is, uh, go out to schema.org, S-C-H-E-M-A.org. And uh, schema is really like a a common protocol that was developed by, you know, uh, Google, Microsoft, a lot of the big search engines. Uh, in a way to kind of standardize some background communications um, on your website, for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, And what it does is it calls out certain elements, functions, features uh, of your website. Um, Example, Bob, that we use all the time, like telling people is, uh, if you have an event on on your page, right, maybe you're a local bar and you're going to have a a band playing or or a block party next week, um, if you were to look at the page as a person, you can see a picture of the band, you know, date, time, ticket price, everything else. We can read that as humans and understand that, you know, like there's a date, there's a time, there's a ticket price, and we can put it all together. This is an event that's happening. Uh, Google reading that, though, you know, as a bot, reading the text and the information, they will see these elements. There's a date, there's a time, there's a ticket price. Um, but they don't have that convention that this is an event. You know what I mean? That's a big assumption for them to make that these things mean it's an event versus a log or a history or something else. Right? So what schema does is in the encoding on your website, on the backside, in this example, you call it out as this is an event, right? And now those things that are inside of that are on that page now have the context of being an event. So now Google can say, here's an event. Here's the event date, the event time, the event location, event ticket price, you know, who's involved in the event, things like that. So schema uh, is, and you're thinking about the word schema, right? I mean, it's it's an architecture, it's a, it's a design element, and it gives kind of some context uh, to information. And that's what this does, but it's invisible to all of us on a website. We don't see it when we visit a page. It's only there for search engines to see and so on a basic level, that's kind of what the function of it is for, is to communicate to search engines and other, you know, bots, if you will, um, what pages are about, what the website is about, you know, industry references, again, events, special things like that. Um, in the same way, like maybe you just had a brand new website that was developed and uh, paid a lot of money for it and it looks great. It doesn't mean that your web designer is aware of schema, Right. Right now, at least in the digital marketing world and design world, this is very much something that's leveraged from an SEO standpoint. Um, It's not mainstream yet, like like keywords might be, right? Or or things like that, or mobile friendliness as a convention that matters. Um, So there's a pretty good chance that unless you've had somebody employed for SEO specifically, and that SEO is up to date and, and practicing schema and utilizing schema, there's a pretty good chance this is not on your website. Um, now if you're using WordPress and you have a plugin like Yoast or something else, uh, there, there's plugins that have come out over the last year or two that incorporate schema. Um, but there's a difference between, like you always say, like free with a headache or headache free, right? Um, you can use some plugins that are out there to do some basic schema for you. Um, but you're going to get out what you put into it, right? Again, Going back to Terry Samuels, um, our favorite expert and guru um, on all things schema. Um, if you hand code stuff and do research, uh, you can leverage schema to the nth degree way more than any free plugin or application can, or even a builder online. If you do, if you go do a Google search for schema generator, right, you're gonna find a bunch of tools online, some free, some paid. But that's still all automated. And the real power from schema comes into the research you can do about what is this business? You know, Bob, as a business owner, Sue, what's your history? Like the the information you can find from research and then incorporate that onto that page for schema, kind of depending on whatever your topic is. Tools aren't going to find that, you know, 
right now today, it still takes a human being to draw these connections. Like, Hey, that's Bob where it says, Robert, that's that same Bob, right? Or Susan, that's still that same Sue. And, um, using schema in an automated way through a plug in our tool. Hey, it's better than nothing. Um, but I'm just, I guess, giving this context so people know that that doesn't mean you're doing it to its fullest extent just because you have it, right? And uh, with that, I guess I'd offer up to everybody, if you're unsure about this or if you have a question uh, about are you leveraging it the right way, is it on your website or not, reach out to us. This is something that we can very quickly take a look at your website and tell you that, A, if you have it, B, you know, are you leveraging it, right? On a scale of 1 to 10, are you a 1 or are you a 10? You know, where are you at? Um, just because, you know, for the layperson and pretty much everybody, unless you're experienced in schema, um, you really can't answer that question. So um, I think this is a very important topic for everybody because right now this can be a huge tiebreaker. Hey, everyone, just a quick message about our free SEO audit tool on localseotactics.com. And we'll get right back to the show. If you haven't taken advantage of it yet, go on out to localseotactics.com slash free SEO audit or uh, look for the yellow button up in the top right corner. Click that. And it's going to take just a couple seconds. You enter in the page that you want to optimize what you're looking for the audit to score against. Enter in that page, enter in the keyword you're looking to get optimized for, and enter in your email address, click the button, and it's going to take a few seconds, and then it's going to send you off a PDF report uh, via email. Uh, it's a great report. It's going to kind of give you an overall score of some vital SEO areas for that page and for your website at large, even though it's auditing this page. Um, it's going to tell you some of the good things that are happening, some of the bad things that are happening too, and give you basically a checklist of some things that you need to shore up and what you can do to improve your SEO for that page for that keyword that you're auditing. Now you can use this as many times as you want. You can do multiple keywords, multiple pages, multiple keywords on the same page. You can even use this to uh, check against your competitors, right? If you want to do a little reverse engineering, uh, see how they're scoring for a certain keyword, what they may be doing good uh, that you're not and some things to improve there. So lots of different ways to use it completely free. Again, go on to localseotactics.com slash free SEO audit, or look for the yellow button in the top right corner of the website. All things being equal, again, if Bob and I, I do these examples all the time, if we have competing businesses and have, you know, uh, all the relevancy and authority for Google, if I have good schema on my website and he doesn't, this will definitely be a tiebreaker and I'm going to rank over Bob, you know, in that. So, Just super what important. Would you say, what would you say in um, percentage, like what role does schema play in the percentage of, of websites? And then I guess could you... As an example, um, let's just say there's a service that we'll just call it buggy whips, right? Mm -hmm. Is one end of the spectrum. And then let's say the other end of the spectrum is DWI attorneys. And how does schema, like, is schema going to be super relevant with the buggy, buggy whip, you know, person that's maybe there's not a lot of searches versus yeah. the DWI attorney or what have you? I mean, can you? You know, I don't know if that's the right spin, but then, yeah. you know, in the grand, because when you when you make general statements like schema is very important and it is responsible for 20 percent of your SEO or 10 percent, that's a broad statement. It doesn't really matter matter that much, I assume, for the buggy whip person, because if they just do half of their stuff right, they're going to show up because there's not. Yep. You know what I mean? Can you can you expound on that just a little bit? Yeah, I think this is some great questions to peel back some layers. Um, so in general, like your first part, like as a percentage, how important is it if you're building your website or your focus for SEO, right? Um, I think it goes back to, to your point. What you're getting at is how competitive your market is, right? So like the buggy whip, um, you're the only buggy whip manufacturer in town. Maybe even in the world still, right? If that's if that's your niche that you're in. Well, if you're an but, Amish, you know, if you're an Amish country and your Amish friends right. are googling you, you know, you want to be right. you want to be right in there, right? So you got to be, you got to be the one. Um, yeah, if you're not very competitive, if like if you're completely dominant right now, right, and all your keywords you want, your proximity is amazing, you reach the entire state, people are searching. Um, I wouldn't worry about schema or pretty much most other things with SEO, because like, what else could you possibly achieve? You, you're more in maintenance mode, making sure that your right. website is compliant and that people are still getting there and you know, things like that. That's pretty rare, I think, for people to be in that position though, right? Um, 
But if you're in that in that position, you are the authoritative expert, apparently, right, in, in your industry, and you shouldn't have to worry about a whole lot of anything. Um, for everybody else, I think there's some spectrum there. Um, what schema is, for sure, is a new frontier to leverage for SEO. Um, rewinding the clock years, maybe even a decade or more, just creating a page that was about a keyword and then stuffing that page full of that keyword and related keywords. If you're doing that and other people weren't to that same degree, you know, you're ranking, right? It was pretty easy. Yeah. Um, that went away. That's extremely spammy now. And Google is wise to that. Um, but having a ton of content on your page and a ton of mentions for that keyword is still something that matters for SEO. Um, Google's able, able to read your screen now and us users also can know when we hit this like old outdated spammy website and we just back out of it. So from a user experience, we're sending bad signals when we land on a page like that and that page gets promoted. Google can also see this and demote the page. Schema on the other hand is an area, again, it's not visible to us as human beings. So it's not part of the user experience and uh, is an area that you can put a ton of content. Uh, as Terry, if people listen to these episodes, Terry mentions in there, it's almost like a second website for the amount of content in the coding, right? Um, there's so much stuff that you put in there that you just couldn't put on page because it would be a horrible looking page. It, it would be almost maybe nonsensical even to look at, um, but you're overwhelming Google with the amount of information on the back end, And I mean, overwhelming in a good way. Um, so it definitely, it's, a, it's an extremely important area for you to pay attention to um, if you're not that completely dominant person in your industry and in your, in your location, Bob, to your kind of buggy whip part of the question, uh, back to a more solid answer on how much of a percentage should it be. Um, you got to take care of the core things for your website. You've got to be mobile compliant, right? You've yeah. got to have a fast website and it has to be secure. Some of these things Google has said are direct ranking factor, ranking factors in the eyes of Google. Those are the number one things, right? Right. Now, after you've accomplished those and you have keywords and content that's relevant, uh, I'd say schema is now the very next thing, right? Um, as a percentage, you know, is it a quarter of your focus or 20% or of your focus? Like, probably somewhere in there um, as a percentage, just to kind of try to quantify it, you know, but then again, in the other way, as a more of priorities, I'd say it's your, you know, fourth or fifth thing to look at once you kind of get your core architecture and base down. Um, and this this all meaning that it is very important, right? Um, unless you're dominant, which in which case again, all all micro parts of SEO to try to move the needle aren't going to matter to you because you can't go past number one already. So, right. um, definitely an area. If you are sitting out there listening and like, I want to improve my rankings because I'm not that dominant person. Peek under the hood for this topic of schema. It can be something that can definitely start to move the needle on your website. Now, the downside for this too. Um, just to kind of get full spectrum to everybody to do schema the right way. Like we said, you're not going to accomplish these results with using an automated tool or a plugin or some cheap solution. Schema is labor intensive. It requires a lot of research, a lot of hand coding. Um, that's just the way it is right now. Maybe next year or the year after somebody will get a tool that really does a lot of the heavy lifting for us. Um, but just to warn everybody that yes, is this an amazing tool? Almost a secret weapon of sorts. Yes. And yes, but uh, it's not something that's going to be done for 50 bucks. Uh, this is going to take hours of time. Uh, it's a page by page thing. Um, yeah, just, just kind of warn you on that, but it's worth the investment. Obviously we wouldn't be talking about this on this show for everybody if it wasn't important. Right. So do Jesse, you, I have, go ahead. I, Sue. I have a question for you. You just touched on, it's on every page of your website. I was going to ask you where, where does schema need to be? Is it certain pages or is it on every page? Yeah, great question. There's different types of schema. There's like the organization schema, which is, you know, on every page of your website. Um, that's just saying, hey, we, we are Intrix. Like every page of our website is like, we are Intrix and this is our website, right? Just like a very general uh, example there. Uh, but then you'll have service pages, you know, like this page is about providing a service, you know, so that's going to have service schema. You're going to have, uh, again, if you have an event, if you have a new page that you threw up, this is your bar or restaurant, we got a block party happening. You have a page dedicated to that. You're going to have that event schema, you know, on that page. Um, so it's not, it's not the same thing on every page, 
if it's a page you want ranked, you know, and found, um, it's going to have schema on it. Can you ignore certain pages, your privacy policy page, your contact us page, things like that? Yeah. Um, so I guess I am using that term a little bit loosely, Sue, um, but kind of more describing every page that you're doing SEO on, you know, is, is going to have some schema. And is, is it one and done or do you need to refresh it or update it or audit it, check it? Another great question. Um, it's one and done from a sense of, uh, unless things change, you know, which unfortunately they always will. Now, whether that means your business information changing, um, maybe on your location page or somewhere else on your website, you have your hours of operation. Um, there's going to be a spot in schema for you to list, like when you're talking about your local business, like mm -hmm. hours of operation, right? So if you change something about your business that's in your schema, uh, just like it's on your website, you're going to want to change that as well. Um, also, uh, schema is evolving. Uh, this is something that's developed a few years ago. Again, it's a collaboration between these other companies and, and some nonprofits. Uh, it's kind of get this uniform language, right? Uh, everybody can agree on. It's being modified and evolves as SEOs, marketers, and other people um, start to take advantage of it and, you, and, and learn how to use it more and how this language can kind of matter to things. Um, so there's also the part of staying up to date on a new way to use schema or a new function within schema. Uh, I think I might have even asked Terry this in the latest episode um, which as of today, end of October is not yet released. That's going to be very shortly here. Um, and he speaks to that a little bit, uh, for how often and how often things change, things like that. But as a rule, I'd say once you, uh, get it and deploy it to your website, you know, maybe every six months, just revisit it, ask your, your, your SEOs and your, your marketers, should it be updated and then kind of initiate a quick audit on it. Um, unless things have changed for your business, of course, right? Then update that on the fly. But if things have been pretty static, I'd probably every six months just check and see, is there anything else we should be doing and can be doing as part of a regular uh, audit on your SEO in general? So good question. What, what, I mean, so any idea like what bookends are, or what you can budget for, I, I suppose it just really depends on the size of your site. I mean, yeah, it depends on the size of your site, the number of pages, um, just throwing stuff out there, you know, for, for money is what you're talking right for bookends. Yeah. Uh, um, man, if you're probably on the low end, uh, if you're doing a few pages, you know, you might be, I don't know, three, four, 500 bucks. Um, that probably about, about as low as I would maybe expect uh, for, for the level of schema we're talking about at least. Right. And that's the hard part on this, Bob is yeah. Almost like anything else for gigs or or or, or one-off jobs for contractors, like if I hey I need a new website, can I get one for seventy-five bucks right now? Yes. Can I get one for twenty thousand dollars? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean. So yeah. there is a lot of spectrum in there. To your point on the size of the website and then the person providing the schema, how in depth it is. Um, but for the, for the kind of schema that we provide, the kind of schema we would expect and that we want on our client websites, you're talking thousands of dollars. To be to be frank with everybody, right now that's going to be a fifty to hundred page website, you know, with okay. lots of landing pages and service pages. Um, if you've got a dozen or two pages, you know, maybe cut that in half or, or something like that. But um, it's extremely labor intensive, and the people that build this stuff aren't making ten bucks an hour. You know what I mean? It's yeah. um, a lot of research. You got to have the research skills, um, how to navigate Google and find things, and then you got to have the skills to do the coding. You know, cause this is not just like typing on a word document. It's, it's a little bit more like programming, you know, when you, when you type out the code for the schema. So, uh, wish it was <laughs> cheaper than that, right. For our sake yeah. and for everybody else's. But, um, and that's where if you do have a discussion with us or somebody else about schema, um, if that budget is scary, um, this isn't something where you have to do it all at once too. Again, there's, there's kind of layers of this. There's the organizational schema, which you apply to all your pages. Hey, that's one thing that gets applied to everything, you know, and then maybe you do your home page, maybe some location pages, some service pages. This is definitely something you can meter out, you know, page by page as you go. Um, and with that too, like we always talk about testing things, you know, if you want to dip your toe in the water, pick a few landing pages, throw the schema at those, you know, sit back for a month or two, see if it made a difference. If it did, yeah. you're probably getting an ROI on that money and uh, reinvest it. So, yeah, no, that's a great point. I mean, it, you know, you don't need to, if money's tight, 
you know, which it typically is for all of us. You don't need to drop three grand. You can just do 500 with select pages and then see how that affects them. Yep. And just like everything else, you know, if there isn't ROI, don't do it. And, uh, if people have been listening to our show for a while, I think we're, we're coming up or past three years, you know, 130, 140 episodes. Uh, I think people that are listening, or if you're finding us for the first time here, go back, check our reviews and everything else. We don't just throw stuff out there that really uh, isn't effective or is, you know, smoke and mirrors type stuff. So the, the topic of schema, us being behind it, having people like Terry on, um, even though it's expensive, um, it's it's something that's validated, right? And, and yeah. makes a difference. So Yeah, it's very effective. I have trust in that. Jesse, would you say that adding schema to your website is something that all SEO firms include in their services or is it a no a or what I, I know we do. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess I couldn't put a number on like a percentage for how many SEOs do or don't do this, whatever. I definitely can tell you that uh, it's something that I would ask my SEO if they even know about. Okay, great. Um, and then show me how you're doing it. Um, it's again, because it can be so hidden, you can't see it on your website. So if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. And it can be one of these areas that somebody can really pull the wool over your eyes on. Definitely all SEOs don't know about it. All web designers don't know about it. Um, and then there's the other layer, Sue, like we were just talking, where if they do know about it, are they deploying schema just because they have a plugin that does basic schema, right? There's mm -hmm. degrees of this, you know, how, how in-depth is it? Um, so unfortunately, there's a spectrum there. But I, I think it just comes down to making sure if you're listening to this and you're concerned about your SEO, which if you're listening to this, you are. That's what we do on the show. Um, this is something. This is something to check into for your website. So, uh, and again, if if you want, you can reach out to us. Just go to local SEO tactics, whether the contact form, submit a question, pick a spot, send us a message, and um, we can check your schema and at least give you a, a thumbs up. You know, you have it or not. A deeper consultation or developing schema definitely be a paid service. We can talk about that, but um, we definitely know what we're doing here and can help you look under the hood. So worth a check. Good to know. Good to know. Anything you want to add? Anything else you want to add, Bob? No, or Jesse? no, this is kind of Jesse's lane. So he's, he's knows more about it than I do. So pretty technical topic, <laughs> super, super exciting topic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For some I, I, <laughs> so it gets results. That's as a business owner, it's right. I'll you know do almost anything just so we you know get to the top. So yep, stay up to date on the best practices. As an owner, that's that's the number one thing, right? So yeah, awesome. Well, if you remember one thing and one thing only for our listeners, schema is a highly technical term and part of SEO. Just because you can't see it does not mean it isn't important. Make sure your website has schema on it on each page. It's very important for you to show up in online searches for your services and it needs to be paid attention to. Yep. Going back to the quote of the day, always deliver more than expected by Larry Page, co-founder and the king of Google. Uh, that's what we at Intrix like to do. How many of you who even work with us ever knew that we worked on your schema until we told you or yep. it showed up someplace that that's what we're working on this month? Yep. No, that's perfect, Sue. Like you said, it's uh, definitely part of our SEO recipe, which is why we're, we're sharing it with everybody. That's what we do on the show, right? Tips and tricks to get found online. So yep. schema is for sure one of those things. Um, so that was a question that wasn't from a specific direct uh, client or listener, uh, but something that's more general that we get asked about and something uh, as you're bringing it up, Sue, that is important. We wanted to make sure we shared. If you have a question out there listening, maybe it's a question expanding on schema, right? Or something we talked about in the show um, that you want us to talk about or you're looking for answers on it. We can help you. Go on out to localseotactics.com, scroll down to the button, click on the link for submit a question. You can type it in on the form or you can call it in and leave the voicemail. We got a few of these, Sue. Uh, we we'll get to plan on some future episodes here. Right now we're experimenting with a new platform, right? So like one thing at a time, baby steps. Um, but if you do call in and leave a voicemail with your question, we're going to send you off a free t-shirt and uh, play the audio on the show and, and give you that shout out too. So love to hear from you. And if you can help the community learn more about SEO, get some questions out there, um, tide's going to rise for all of us, right? So, all right. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Catch you on the next episode. Bye.
Voilà. Yeah.